demand. And I think that the pace of change, the adoption of devices such as the tablet that's just been used to, to set up this call, to configure it, you know, the adoption of smartphones uh, around the world is just is, is fantastic in the way that it changes the, the demand patterns. And if I probably take room to task on one little bit and say, actually, I don't think video will drive the networks in the future. It's people that will drive the networks in the future. And then, of course, the internet of things as well. So we see this explosion of devices around the periphery of the network. And that's not the model that we built the network for in the past. So we, we actually find a complete inversion of the of the business model from where in the past we built the network and then we gradually allow the, the customers to do things with it. With all of those devices sitting around the periphery of the network and with all the content sitting around it, both video and, and other content, both user-made content and pre-made content, it begins to start to be defined by what the users do and therefore the network that we construct, both fixed and wireless, has to then be, be capable of coping with pretty much close to chaos theory for those of you who come from the sort of physics background because the number of permutations of what people can do with, the, with this communication in the future is almost infinite. So it, cha it changes the game, it changes the way in which the telcos need to, need to play their role with, within the marketplace. So of course the, the, the blending of IT and networking becomes absolutely vital. So those, uh, those OSS layers and the BSS layers that we developed in separate silos, we need to blend them, we need to have open access to them through different APIs in order to, to give us the flexibility to address the user demand. What, what, we, what we fundamentally see changing there is that inversion of the model. So perhaps there is a, a requirement for some re rethinking in the way that governments and regulators think about the telecom market. Because it isn't just the telecom market, it now includes the media, it includes the IT, it includes a much broader environment. We have to think about ways in which, rather than trying to control the telecom market from a telecom point of view, we actually embed telecoms into the broader into the broader set of, of processes, both for personal and for business lives, in order to get the value. So value in the future may well come to the telcos through through other channels, through other business models. And I think if you if you think about the much talked about cloud discussion uh, and, the, and the way that impacts the telecom industry, it is an opportunity to build both new business models to embrace the virtualization that is there from the, from the IT side, you know, to embrace this, this explosion in devices, to embrace the way that the video can be embedded in our lives. And we, but we need to build a network which actually, in conjunction with the data center environment, a network which reaches that, that ubiquitous nature of networking, which reaches every rural part of, the, every, of every country at a reasonable price. So that fundamentally, we have to change the economics of what we do, in some countries, we see regulators bringing that together in terms of network consolidation. In others, it's competition at different levels. But fundamentally, we need to have the cost-based change and, of course, the power-based change in terms of the power that we consume in order to deliver all of these services. So the, 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 the net, net for me on this, on this subject is that the demand is unprecedentedly high. You know, the, the demand for everyone to communicate around the world, the way people communicate, the way things communicate. The question is, in terms of the industry stepping up and changing the business models, changing the way that we build and manage networks, and using the sort of technology that you're talking about here today, with this with these small cell and liquid radio, to, to, to just change the way that we think about the way networks get built. So spreading it out, changing the economics, and actually embedding telecoms into the broader set of services that support our business and our personal lives. Back to you. Hey Chris, we call it live radio, but nevertheless, <laughs> liquid radio is not the competition. And that's one of the problems with being having very poor eyesight, I can see it all the time. All right, all right, that's very good. But I, I think to the audience, I would like to say a few things uh, as well, because yep. a lot of what we have to do is something completely different than we've done in the past. I mean, everybody would say that. And the word that I would like to introduce for you to consider in the coming days is intuition. Because intuitive technology uh, is conquering the world. Uh, if you look to what the most successful uh, handsets are doing, they are intuitive. Intuitive to use, intuitive what they do for you. And the same is if you look to the applications. Those who are capturing the imagination are no longer culturally bounded. It's not true that an American invention on the web stays in America. It goes global. And it goes global because it touches the intuitive nature of what you can do with technology. 
And one of the reasons that I think that the whole discussion about Vibranium was so important, it deals with an intuitive problem, and it solves it. And the intuition is, I don't want interference. Whether it's horizon interference, whether it's energy interference, whatever interference it is, I don't want it. So we have to think about transformation, not just according to the lines of the logic of technology. We have to learn to live with the reality that the masses own what we do now for a living. Uh, you say it's the consumer. I would say it's the masses of consumers that drives and dictates what we're going to do with it. It's not the regulator per se. You can make a deal behind closed doors. That time is gone. You have to do it in front of everybody. And everybody will judge it based on what it will it do for my freedom to have the service wherever I am? What will it do to my freedom to express myself in any shape or form that I would like? And what will it do for me to have that on a, on a level of expectation that maybe it's not fair, but I have it anyway? And, and, and I think that therefore, uh, our, our, our conference with you is not about technology. It's not. It's not about what you can do from a technology roadmap perspective. It is what you can do to influence the expectation of masses of consumers and businesses that uses what you make in a very different way to influence how they operate, how they run their lives, and how they run their businesses. So I agree with Chris, it's much more about being an ingredient of somebody else's lifestyle than whether it's in anything else. So, um, I, I think it is a, uh, you know, for Falk uh, Kalusha, this is a great moment to make sure that everybody sees it's working, that we have uh, a piece of technology that will allow people to be more creative than ever before. But I think the bigger picture, the more important message to that is, you're not going to build the next generation network. You're going to build an impactful capability that people will use in a very different way than they have done before. That is an exciting uh, uh, job task for that, for sure. Good. Well, well, thank you very much, uh, Ben, for joining us from Paris. Thank you very much, Chris, for joining us from, from New Jersey. I'm going to be leaving the, uh, the video chat conference now. Uh, we're going to return back to our program here in Miami. But again, uh, please join me in thanking Ben and Chris for joining us live over Miami. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Ben. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. So, uh, I can't believe, uh, as I did, I can't believe liquid came out rather than that. Yeah, we get back to the audio on the. Uh, yeah, thank you. Nice to see you again soon. Bye bye. Good. So, um, intuition, as Ben said, that's what it's, what it's all about. But, but let's just reflect for a moment that was great. of what yeah. happened here. I mean, uh, picking up on the last point that, that Ben just made. I mean, in terms of